how is the day going you're welcome to yet another episode at life through his lens um a channel which is aimed at reflecting god's thoughts to you god's thoughts about life and today i'm gonna be talking about kissing yes mm-hmm. you heard me right kissing and that's why i actually titled today's topic this Now you see, many people, single people, especially Christ, um, single Christians, often run away from advice such as, stop kissing. That guy doesn't love you. He just using you. I mean, break up with him now. Many people don't want to hear that. And then don't be too fast to actually judge them. Because if you, if you actually look at it, you see that most of these people were actually bereft of love while growing up. They were not shown enough love. They were not shown like enough attention and all that so they are actually vulnerable when they find someone who loves them so much someone who who pretends now to love them so much and all that but you see you shouldn't judge someone's um, motive and intentions and intentions actually by the person's actions don't judge someone's motive and intention by the person's actions because let me tell you that a guy treats you so much that he makes you feel like heaven on earth does not mean he's an angel oh my, that guy might even be the devil's right hand man say did i say that but that is the truth that a girl buys you all the presents in the world she washes your clothes she cooks for you does not mean that she's an angel <laughs> Um, go and check, check the roots, go and check very, dig very well, you might be shocked at what you realize. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that you shouldn't actually judge people's motives and intentions by their actions. No! Now, the big question here is, should Christians kiss? Kissing now, we just make kissing now, there's nothing there. Um, oh, bros, why start up a fire if you're not ready to bake something? Um, oh, girl, why actually start up love if you're not ready to actually continue in it why why kiss if you're not ready to i mean have sex if you don't have sex in your mind don't be tempting yourself or should not allow the devil to tempt you it's not <laughs> oh my bros you're not a stick oh. you actually have blood flowing in your veins a busy water i don't know sister me you cannot keep your hands to yourself every time you touch it touch it you touch it you touch it even when you want to laugh ah, ah! somebody must laugh at you you cannot uh-uh, uh-uh, stop tempting someone's son, stop it. Oh, God, stop tempting someone's daughter. It is not good. Christians are not meant to behave like that. Don't you know that most times you're actually the person that actually make ourselves pray to the devil? Like, what do you think? That you can kiss like that and nothing will happen? Ha! Now, wow, stick, Child. statue. I don't know your statue. Well done. Well done, boss. Now let me tell you, you cannot kiss like that and nothing will happen. And even if you eventually do that and nothing happens, chillax, something is coming. Because research has actually proven that those people who end up kissing regularly, those people who end up kissing regularly actually find themselves born like they find themselves bondering more. Do you understand? Like there is this strong connection that begins to exist between them. So, Oga, okay, why are you why are you kissing somebody if you know that you're not ready to actually have that kind of connection with the person? I don't understand. I don't understand. Why would you kiss someone if you're not ready to actually commit to that relationship? That's why they said kissing. Kiss only when you're married. Yes. Kissing should only be done when you're married. It is not for single Christians. It is not for... It's not even for cutting Christians self. No. Only when you are married. Because in kissing, there is a great bond there. Mm-hmm. There is a great bond. Now, let me shock you. Do you actually know that kissing is addictive? And that's why once you start, it will be very, very hard for you to stop. You hear people say things like, I don't know, I've been trying to stop, but I enjoy it. Like, this is butterflies in my stomach. I enjoy it. Oh my God. <laughs> Let me tell you, it is very, 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 very addictive. And that's why you should not even start. Like, why start up a fire if you're not ready to bake something? Why kiss if you're not ready to actually do the needful, you know? Because we are human beings and we have emotions, we have feelings, we have chemical reactions all over our bodies. Yes, and that's why you should not. Let me tell you, and many people might be like, but he loves me. I said that if, if I love him too, I should just kiss him. Let me tell you. And that's why I'm actually saying that. Kissing as a single Christian is not a show of love. Don't let anybody deceive you that kiss me now to show me that you love me. Let's just do this. Now. It's not like you're having sex now. It's just kissing. It is not a show of love. Or more, it is just to satisfy one's sexual desires. That's why many single people end up kissing because they know that, okay, the Bible is against sleeping together. The Bible is against um, sexual intercourse and all that. Okay, so let us just kiss now. 
No, it is not a show of love. It is lost. Yes, it is lost. Kissing is lost. And so don't let anybody deceive you. Don't give way for the devil. That's why the Bible says, flee from all appearance of evil. Flee. And I know many of you have actually heard what I said and you're like, okay, I've heard everything. So how do I stop it now? Now that I'm a victim of it, now that I'm addicted to kissing, how do I stop it? Now, the number one step you have to take is, is to actually check your relationship. Who are you in a relationship with? Is he or she a believer or an unbeliever? That is the number one step. Because see, no godly man or woman will make you do something that he or she knows is against God's principles. No godly man or woman will make you want to go against God's laws. So you have to check it. The person I'm in a relationship with, is that person even a believer? Is that person even... Because the Bible says, do not be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. Like it is in the Bible, you... If the person is an unbeliever, like there is no two ways about it. Don't say, ah, oh, but he loves me now. I cannot stop his place. Ja, like run for your life. It is not accepted at all. Yes, it may be hard, but God has given you the strength. You have to run for your life. That is the first step. Now, the second step is you have to discipline yourself. If you're someone who is intentional about your work with God, if you guys are intentional about your work with God, then you will know that your relationship should be God-driven. Like Jesus should be at the center of your relationship. Now, if you want your relationship to glorify God, if you want your relationship to please God, then you have to discipline yourself and tell yourself that I know that we are sexually attracted to each other. I know that we are actually attracted to each other. But for this meantime, I'm not going to kiss. Now, I'm talking of a relationship. Like when I talk of relationship, I'm talking of courtship, or not just uh, any kind of relationship. I'm talking of courtship. Like God has told you that this person is your husband or this person is your wife. I'm in that relationship, that courtship period. You have to. Create a stance and tell yourself that I'm not going to defile God. I'm not going to defile. We are not going to defile ourselves in this relationship. There is no kissing. And you pull stick by it. You pull stand firm in that decision. That that is the second point. I said the first point is you have to know the person your relationship is. If the person is not a, it's not a believer guy, you have to run, run for your life. Now the second point is you have to make this at the center of your relationship. By disciplining yourself. Yes, you have to discipline yourself. Now, the third point is to avoid secluded places. You see, many people don't want to avoid secluded places. They want to stay together. See, you can have a private relationship and not a secret relationship. Your relationship can be so private but not secretive. And what do I mean by this? You can stay in a public place but still have a private relationship with your partner. Yes, don't say that because I'm going to an e tree. people will hear what you are discussing. No, you guys can actually lower your voices and people will not hear. But avoid secluded places. It's very, very important because it is in darkness that immorality thrives. Immorality thrives in darkness. Mm -hmm. Immorality thrives in darkness. So don't give the devil a, an advantage over you. Avoid secluded places. Go to a cinema. You guys can go to a restaurant. You guys can visit an e tree. You can... Just go to anywhere that is public. Avoid secluded places. Now, the fourth solution to stop it, to, to, to try to stop kissing, like to, to not be addicted to kissing again, is dress modestly. Dress modestly. It is so, so disheartening right now that lots of Christian ladies and girls are still dressing anyhow. Like anyhow, I don't understand. You have to dress modestly because let me tell you, these are our eyes, eh? They are the light of the body. Whatever you see, you begin to imagine. Do you understand? Our eyes can so pick so much things. So if your partner is fond of dressing immodestly, like if your partner is fond of dressing in a nude way, you cannot, you cannot tell me you stop kissing because you, you will just be attracted to what you see. So you have to dress modestly. All right. So the fifth point right now is study God's word. If you're someone who is intentional about making your relationship please God, then you should study God's word with your partner. Study God's word with your partner so that you know God's do's and don'ts. So that you know what God wants you to do and what God does not like. What God does not want you to do in your relationship. Alright? Now, the sixth point and the most important point is pray together. The Bible says that a family that prays together sticks together. So, you guys have to actually pray together. Pray with your partner. And therefore, make sure you're always praying with your partner. Do you understand? And be accountable to each other. Because that is going to help you a lot. So let me just recap the points I gave. I said the first point is actually know the person you're in a relationship with. The first solution to breaking the addiction of kissing. 
know the person you're in a relationship with. If the person is an unbeliever, ja, run away. The second point is what? Discipline yourself. If you're actually intentional about making Jesus glorified in your relationship and your marriage, then you should discipline yourself by telling yourself that I am not going to kiss. I know I'm severely attracted to you, but I'm not going to do this. Now, the third point is what? Avoid secluded places. Do not stay in secluded places because in, in darkness thrives immorality. In darkness thrives immorality. So avoid secluded places. That is the third solution. Now, the fourth solution is dress modestly. Make sure you don't expose any private parts. Any dress modestly because see the eyes are the lights. The, the eyes are the light of the body, and whatever you see is what you imagine. Do you understand? Now the fourth point is what I mean. The fifth point is what study God's word together. You have you have to actually study God's words together because you will know God's do's and don'ts. Now the final point I stated is pray together because a family that prays together stays together and try to be accountable to your partner. All right, guys, thank you so much for sitting through to the end of this video. I hope you are blessed by this video. Um, please, if you're a first viewer, if you're not actually part of my life through length family, you're welcome. I'm so so happy to have you here with me today. I know we are right. Okay, so please don't forget to click on the subscription button and click on the notification button also to be notified when I drop another video. Trust me, you're gonna be edified by the contents that I'll be uploading next week. I'll be coming with another interesting topic, so please anticipate. All right, guys, and don't forget, yeah, I'm also on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, you can actually follow me up on Facebook at Life Through His Lens Hash. Life Through His Lens Hash on Facebook. And I'll be so, so glad to actually see you. And don't forget to drop your comments in the comment section. I'll be so, so glad to reply to all of them. I'll try my possible best to reply to all of them. So till I come your way next time, guys. Ciao. Mwah.